Welcome to the channel everybody. This is Hardware Despair. My name is Ryan and today we are playing the Unreal World and this is part of the tutorial series but it's going to be kind of a separate little playthrough of its own. It will be slightly more advanced um, and if you are new to the game go back and check out the earlier videos that I created. There's three of those that'll kind of walk you through the initial setup and how to get started a little bit better than this will because I'm going to blow through some of the uh, more early parts rather quickly. But anyway let's get started. So we're going to create a brand new character and this is going to be I'm going to kind of show you how I play the most challenging way. Okay, so when I really want to challenge myself in this game, this is my setup, okay? So I'm going for custom. We're not doing easy or too easy. I'm just going to do custom. Quick and easy is, yeah, that's that's also a little bit easier than a custom. So we're not going to do that. Plus, it skips some steps. I'm not interested in skipping anything. I'm going for combo and mail and character name is going to i'm just going to put raven claw it needs to be something unique as i explained initially in my first playthrough your ancestor if you die with a name that name will be part of your ancestry so it just needs to be unique we'll go with this guy he's cool uh, i'm going to start in the winter and let's see here okay now i'm going to spend a little bit of time rolling a good physical profile and personality and physique so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out and I will see you guys in one second when I find someone I like. All right. Well, I have found somebody with a physical profile and physique that I like. It's not the best. He could be a little bit bigger and maybe have better dexterity. But uh, other than that, he's okay. And it did take me quite a while to get this guy satisfied, but uh, I'm okay with him. So let's hit Y for yes to continue. Spells and magic means. Not going to worry about it. That's just for looking. All right, let's go down to the bottom. Now, obviously, in this playthrough, I can't remove points. We're stuck with only five points to add, and that's it. So I'm going to add a couple to the bow. Okay, I can only add one, so that's fine. Let's uh, leave the spear just like it is. That's fine. I think, I think I'll go with one. Mm. No, I'm going to take that one off the knife, actually. I'm going to leave those. Now, carpentry is pretty important. For sure. Textile craft is also good. Tracking. I wish I could take some out of tracking, but we can't. Trapping, definitely. Going to put one in that. Timber craft, also. Hide working is very tempting, but I'm definitely going with building. And let's see here. Carpentry. All right. So that's going to be it. So this guy is not very skilled at much. I mean, his best skill is probably his bow, but we're not even going to start with a bow. So <laughs> let's jump into it. All right, now it's going to ask us what location we want. So let me get my world all set up. Okay, well, I think I found a spot that I like. We're in the southern coast in a fairly flat area that's all around us. Uh, there's a couple little villages here. I don't know. It's hard to see them, but there's this is an actual building or village without like a culture around it. Uh, but we also do have three friendly cultures nearby, including these guys over here, this teal color. They're the most wealthy. So if we can cross that river, see this river here? Yeah, if we stick near the coast and cross that river at some point, we can trade with them, and that'll be good. So this is a good spot. It's a good spot. And we're going to go ahead and enter here. Now, uh, this is the most important part. I'm going with hurt, helpless, and afraid. This is the scenario we start with. Some can be just pretty basic and easy, like Unreal World, or, you know, I want to be a fisherman, start you with extra goods, like, a, you know, random fishing stuff. Hurt, helpless, and afraid handicaps you pretty bad. It's arguably the second most difficult of these different options. The first one would definitely be um, Runaway Slave because it puts you into basically a combat situation, which is very much random. So that's why I don't do this one, even though it would be the most difficult because the combat is a lot of the times pretty random and you're at extreme disadvantage here too. So most of these, I've tried to do it several times and I've gotten successful once or twice, but you usually just die right away. But with Hurt, Helpless, and Afraid, it's more like a survival situation. There's not immediate combat. There will be down the road, but not right away. So we can see it says, Wounded and Left for Dead, you struggle to survive in the wilderness. So let's jump into that one. And yes, this is what I want. I'm going to go with just the regular Unreal World. I don't need a tutorial. That's what this is. So I don't need a game course. No, thank you. We're just going for regular straight up. 
All right, should be jumping in right away after we see the encyclopedia. And here we are. Okay, we're going to start zoomed in. I'm going to immediately go into stealth, kind of turn around, just look, check my surroundings out. Now, let's take a look at our inventory. Okay, so this is all we have is a knife, rough leather boots, woolen trousers, rough fur overcoat. That's actually really nice right there. That's a lot of material. Um, and fur hood. So what I'm going to do with that eventually, maybe not right away, but once we get a shelter up, I'm going to turn that into some uh, gloves. We're going to use our overcoat for some different stuff. That's nice. Um, anyway, so other than that, let's take a look at our health. Let's shift P. Yeah, okay, so here's our wounds. Wounds, injuries, and diseases. We have several. Nothing too terrible. Sometimes you'll start this off and your leg will be hurt real bad so you can't stand up. Or your arm is hurt bad so you can't, you know, draw a bow if you have happen to find one or something. But all these will eventually heal. And it's not super, none of them are uh, like infected. So it's not super important for us to treat these because they're pretty minor. Though most of them will go away on their own just over time. So I'm not going to worry about my health too much. But um, there are some injuries you can get which will really, you'll probably need to like at least wash, you know, and treat a little bit. Maybe I will show you how to do that. Uh, right now I'm just kind of traveling on the uh, local terrain map. I'm gonna pick up some of these stones because we literally have nothing. A knife and the clothes on our back. So this is pure survival in the truest form. You can see up here, we are officially in the winter season, but we start off at the very, very beginning of it. So it's kind of like very late fall, early winter. Um, that's why you don't see any active snow on the ground, but the temperature will start to drop as the days and weeks go on and we will get snow, we'll get very cold. We won't even be able to leave our fire unless we get uh, uh, some better clothing going. So that's the goal. We've got a lot of goals, but uh, the goal right now is to pick up as many resources, free resources that I can find here, and then we're gonna hopefully set up a little shelter, you know, before it gets uh, too late in the season. It won't take us more than a day. I just wanna see what's all around here, okay. This is really handy here, this long stick, that'll help. See, that's what I'm talking about. Finding little stuff like that's gonna be good. Now, this tree in front of me is an alder. I wanna try something. R, no, M, P, no, okay. So if I could take the bark off of this, peel bark from a tree, I could use that in, in the skinning and tanning process, but I'm not going to be able to. It's too late in the year. The, fr the bark is like frozen on the tree. So it won't even let me. We'll have to do that in the spring. But it was worth a try. I just wanted to see if I could do it. Oh, there's some more rocks. Let's grab these. All right, I'm going to collect a little bit more resource. And we're going to jump out to the world map here shortly. All right, we have now zoomed out on the world map. You can see I am on the coast here. Let's go to the map map real quick. So this is the overhead map you can see. kind of looks like when we chose our location on the, on the world screen. So this is the area we've uncovered just by opening it up and looking around. Because we are standing on a mountaintop right now. Uh, there's a lot of, always often a lot of mountains near the coastline, whether it's north or south. So what I'm going to do is very quickly and as efficiently as I can try and get out here onto this flat land, this low land where you don't see as many trees. The trees are a little bit thinner. This is more ideal hunting ground. Now, what I want is to find a big patch of this area, but this will probably have to do for now. Let's just set ourselves down right in the middle of it here. That'll be good. We'll try this area. Let's look around here. Um, there's a lot of water here. I don't care for that. Let's move a little bit. Oh, I need to go into stealth mode. Always remember to go into stealth. Yeah, I'd rather be in an area. I do want some water. We're going to need water. Here we go. We got some interesting mushrooms here. I'm not... Oh, okay. We do know what these are, but it tells us here. It's not edible raw. Unless it's boiled, it is poisonous. So I'm definitely not going to waste time picking those right now. Now, there are some cranberry bushes right here. These cranberry shrubs, they will stay uh, viable for a long time, even once the snow has gone down. So I'm going to actually save those, but this looks like a good spot. See, there's not as much water. There's cranberry bushes. 
and I guess the mushrooms in a pinch, if we can boil, boil them up into a broth, but that's not really going to be possible in the first season. Uh, we don't have anything to boil them in, but this is a good spot. I like this. All right, so this will be the location for our first base, right here by this water. Now, ideally, I would find a tree next to the water. <gasps> no. See, that tree is too small right there. It's not the right kind. That log right there is good, though. All right, this is probably good enough. Let's see here. Yeah, I like this spot, actually. See, we've got this heather patch over to the left, that pink stuff. That's heather. We can eat that or use it for a wound dressing. This tiny, let me zoom in, this tiny little patch right here is water. So let's go ahead and make a hole in the ice there. Beautiful. So that's basically an infinite supply of water. We can drink from that. We can use that for processing skins and stuff. And also a very important resource happens to be right here, this log. Let me move this. Now you can't pick up logs. So what I just did is I hit the M button and that'll allow me to move whatever I select that's at my feet, like a log. So you'll see the log now moves with us. And I'm gonna set this down. Oh, actually, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna push it into the tree. There we go. So now it occupies the same space as the tree. I'm a little bit tired, so I'm just gonna rest. Bird flies into our view, no need to stop. All right, so now it's time to worry about our shelter. I'm gonna put it right here where, my, where I'm standing. First things first, I've got a bunch of rocks and stones on me. Let me drop the stones. Yep, okay. We need to make room in our inventory because I'm going to go cut this tree down. Now, we don't have axes, but the knife that we have will work for these slender trunks. We cannot cut big trees down, though. So I can't really get the logs like this unless I happen to find them. Uh, so that's the reason that the knife is so important, and it's also important to try and get an axe as early as possible. All right, so I've got a bunch of slender trunks. I'm going to drop those real quick at my feet. Now we need some more branches. Let's grab those. All right, pick them up. I'm going to do that one more time because I need pine branch or spruce branches and then regular branches, which we'll get right here. So let's do that again at this tree. And again, so we have plenty of branches because we can always build a fire with these afterwards. All right, now we are going to build a shelter. So it's skills, build, S for shelter. And the direction is north. There we go. It says the knife is a very unhandy tool. Ooh, look at that. Oh, man, we got it built. I'm pushing everything I own into the shelter, and we're going to step into it. Now, we've got ourselves a brand new shelter here, boys and girls. Awesome. All right. Well, it is now morning. We slept through the night. I did build a little fire, but it's burnt out at this point. Uh, just to make sure. I wanted to make sure it wasn't super cold, but, you know, I was just being careful. Uh, we're feeling good. Everything's warm. It's not cold enough that we need to seriously worry. But uh, as I mentioned, at some point, I'm going to take this overcoat off and make gloves out of it. But now's not really the time. Right now, the first thing I want to do this morning is set up some traps. So what I've got in my backpack is three stones and... Well, some slender trunks and some branches so I can set down some light lever traps. I'm going to zoom all the way out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and set one at each cardinal direction for starters. I'll probably set a lot more than that. But for right now, I'm going to do that. And let me pick up one more stone. Yeah, I should be able to carry that. Yep. So I'll show you what I mean here very shortly. Well, 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 I was in the process of setting up my third trap here and I got stopped by an elk. You see, it asked me whenever an animal runs into view, whether it's a bird or an elk, it will ask you, do you want to stop your current task? You can see the elks right up here to my north. I am going to go ahead and say no, I don't want to. I could possibly hunt this elk successfully, even though we only have a knife. It would be very risky. Uh, but we're going to try it in the future, I think. Not right now. I actually want to set these traps first, but we're going to let this elk go. Hopefully he'll stick around the area and we'll get a second or third chance at him. Okay, I'm currently baiting the last trap here with some heather flowers that I picked. I've also got a couple of cranberries, as you can see. So now we're fully zoomed out, and when I go back to my shelter, i got to step inside of it. <clears throat> you can see that there is now a trap in each of the cardinal directions. And I tried to get them out as far as I could. That one on the right, I could probably move a little bit farther out. But you can see the one down south is like 
right on the edge of my vision, but there it is right there. So hopefully as time goes by, those will fill up with birds. And what I'm going to do is build more of them. Uh, we've got time. It's still morning. I've still got plenty of energy. I've got rocks on me, but I need, I picked up a bunch of stones at our first location because there were some mountains nearby. So I've still got nine of those. I think I'm going to grab four more. All right, and now I need some more slender trunks. So I'm going to walk over to one of these little ones, the young pine, and we're going to take this guy down. There we go. Hopefully he'll give us four. So it's, it alternates between like three, four, or five trunks you get off these old trees. Ah, now it just stopped me in the middle of my action and told me that a minor puncture in my thorax is fully healed. So that's good news. One of our injuries is healed, like I mentioned. They naturally do over time. Oh, we got five trunks for that, which means we are overweight and I need to drop one of them. Yep. So if you get overweight, you can't move. So I just had to drop that. We'll come back for that a little later on. All right. So now instead of the cardinal directions, I'm going to put them in like the, the corners. So this one, I'm going to try and eyeball where the corner is. Oh, look, it's near where that elk was running around. I will right, put that one there. There's the elk again. Man, oh man. Oh, there's a baby with it too. Wow. It's possible, but that would be really tough. Because I don't have any kind of uh, like ranged weapons. Like I'm not going to throw my knife at it. That would be ridiculous. But oh boy, if we could get one of those killed. Whew. All right, let me give it a shot because we're... We're at home. Let me drop what I've got on me here because I don't want to be too overweight. Yeah, we need as much endurance as we can. In fact, I'm starting a little bit a little bit injured, so that's not good. Let's look at these guys first. I want to see the baby because there's a baby here. Yeah, we got an elk calf and the mother, the big elk. Okay, so I'm going to try and do attrition hunting or stamina hunting. I'm going to wear these guys out. Um, if possible, it's a long process. We'll see how it goes. There's not a whole lot of open flat terrain here. We might run out. They might run into a forest, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, well, I've zeroed in on the elk calf. I figured let's not get greedy. Um, and the calf is very predictable in a sense, too, because he's always going to try and return to his mother. So, And the mother's a little bit more flighty. She's going to go just where she wants and the calf will follow her. But this calf, I can, if I can constantly stay between it and the mother, I can get it fatigued really easily. And you see I've done that. So if we look at it, it says elk calf. It looks fatigued. So we're there. We're getting closer. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing. You can see the calf over here to the east. He's very small. He's got the little blue arrow right there. There he is. And, of course, my character's right in the middle. So he doesn't see me. I'm stealth right now. But I'm going to run at him. I'm going to charge him. See, and now he's turning and running. So he's going to get more fatigued. I'm going to go back into stealth and rest a little bit as I walk. Now we just got to kind of find him again. Where's he at? Where's he at? Oh, there he is. He's up top. Okay, let's look at him. It's always good and idea, good to keep an eye on him. See what he's doing. He's very fatigued. All right. So we might be able to chase him down now. See, he's running. I'm going to start running myself and just sprint. Yeah, okay, let me wield my knife. Got my knife in my hand. Yeah, we've got him. We've got him. Good thing about this guy is he's small, so we don't get a huge amount of meat, but that's good, so we won't waste it, you know? And I can carry him on my back, bring him back home. All right, so he is almost totally fatigued. He can't move at all just about. He's almost done for. I'm going to zoom in because this guy is ours. There we go. Okay, he's in melee distance, so let me take him out. Okay, well, I've hit him numerous times. I've missed several times, but we finally got him down. Oops, I just dropped my knife. Let me pick that back up. All right, now I need to wheel it again. There we go. Quit dropping your knife, buddy. All right, let's go for the blunt on the head again. Okay, he's crippled. He's down. See how he's like, he's moving, but he's down. All right, so he's, that means he's hurt really bad. I'm going to keep hitting him in the head. Oh, he moved. It's kind of annoying. Combat's a little bit annoying, but you'll get it eventually. 
Just keep, be persistent. Super, but there we go. Okay, so he's fully out of it. So we're going to go blunt to the skull. And I'm going to repeat that action. He's fully unconscious. We're just bashing his brains out right now. It's basically, okay, now he's dead. I'm going into stealth mode. I'm going to zoom out. His mother's probably around here, but she's no threat. She's not just going to charge us, even if we are beating her baby to death. It's not going to happen. So we can pick him up. He's pretty heavy, but uh, let's take a look at him. Elk calf carcass, 166 pounds of good fresh meat and hide. All right. Now, it would be impossible to try and get back home on the local terrain map. So from here, I'm just going to zoom out and move over to our shelter a couple spaces. Boom. Look at that. We are back home. We've got ourselves a baby elk calf. I got to say, that was super lucky. That was a really, really lucky find. You don't always get elk start or, you know, right in your starting location. So we got incredibly lucky. I'm going to drop that, get that carcass off my body. I'm going to go grab this wood real quick because we're going to be needing fires. All right, there's a bird. Hello, bird. You're going to jump into our trap for us? All right, now let's focus on this carcass. This is actually something I didn't show off very much in the uh, original tutorial series. So this is going to be really, really good for learning basically how to process an animal. So we'll go through this step by step. So I've dropped the carcass right next to a water puddle. Ideally, you do this next to water. You don't have to butcher it next to water, but you do have to do the skin, the hiding and the processing of the skin next to water. So it's easier. Um, I'm going to stand on top of this bad boy, and then I'm going to skin him. If you butcher him first before skinning him, you've ruined it. You've lost the skin. You'll still get meat, but you're not going to get the skin. So always skin your animal before you butcher it. So I hit S for skills and then H for hide working. And then I want to go ahead and skin it. So I hit S again, S skin an animal, and it'll do the one at my feet. All we need is a knife. Beautiful. So now we have obtained a harsh winter elk skin. It's a pretty small one, 2.2 pounds, and it's got the harsh modifier, which means it's not good quality, but, you know, we get what we can get. Now, the skinned carcass is also at our feet. You can see the little red carcass. There he is. Let's go ahead and butcher him now. I'm just going to hit B. And we just got 75 edible elk cuts. That's huge. Also, the bones. I'm going to pick those bones up. Now, before we get to cooking, which we will do, I'm going to take a quick drink of the water. I'm going to process the skin first, okay? So I'm going to do these two things in tandem. First, we're going to get the skin going, and then we're going to start cooking. Because the skin takes time. Between each step, it takes time to like wait for it to happen. So what I'm going to do is go back to skills with S. H for hide working, and now we need to clean the skin. We've got it on our possession. It just it's fresh off the animal's body, so let's clean it. Now this you will need to select the skin, and now it's telling me we need 1.1 pounds of water for this. So this is what one of the steps we need to be next to water to do. Boom. Okay, so it's done. Now it's still in our inventory because the clean elk skin, it's like, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to turn it into fur? Do you want to turn it into leather? Or do you want to just uh, delay the process so you can have extra time? Um, right now, we're going to turn it into fur. We need the fur. So I'm going to hit skills, hide working, and now I'm going to go into uh, bu -bu 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 cure. No, 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 no. T, tan the skin. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to dehair it, you can turn it into leather. Curing it is for preservation, gives you extra time, or you can tan it, which is what we're going to do. All right, so tanning it, we'll just turn it into fur. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the fat here. It's asking me for 1.1 pounds of water, which we have, so let's check that off. But we need 0.2 pounds of tanning material, which could be fat from the animal itself, which we automatically get whenever you butcher it, or it could be that bark that I was trying to peel off the tree a little earlier. Bark can be used with, as tanning material as well. But we don't have that, so I'm just going to be forced to use the elk fat. There we go. Otherwise, if we do have the bark, I could use that fat to eat. I could cook it up and eat it. And it's very good for saturation in terms of your hunger level. Now, if we step away, we'll see that the skin is on the ground. So it is currently processing. You see a harsh winter tanning skin being prepared here at our feet. If I try to pick it up, it says it's not ready yet. You may pick it up by late afternoon. 
Okay, well, I have roasted up some meat. I had started a fire and I got some roasting, but I also took off my cloak and I went ahead and ripped a little bit of it off, one pound of uh, fur to make some cords with. So now I have 15 one foot cords. All right, I started with one 15 foot, but I shortened them in a bunch of one footers. So we're going to try and dry some of this meat here. Now this takes a few days, actually it takes like two weeks for the process of drying, but it's worth doing because we can preserve some of this elk here. So what I'm gonna do is hit cook uh, skills, C for cooking, and now I want to go down to dry, D. All right, now I'm gonna select the 55 elk cuts. And I want to do 19, or actually, let's just do the maximum. Hold on, let me redo that. Yeah, so shift cook D, select, and maximum. Place for drying, perfect. Ooh, we don't even have enough cordage to do the maximum, so I'm just going to give it all the cordage I have. That's it. All right, ooh, who won't let me do it without the max? Shoot. All right, we'll just do little by little then. We can hit repeat. We'll do that. I'll set 15, 19. Well, let's do an even number, 20. All right, 10 foot accord, okay. Not bad. Now I should be able to repeat it and do 10, maybe 10 more with the cordage I have. Let's try that. One foot of, okay. I can repeat that a couple more times then. 10, yes, five feet of cord. Oh, what? Um, hmm. Well, that's good enough. Let's see how much do we have left here. I've still got 34 elk cuts. Eh, let's go ahead and use what little cordage we got left, I think. Okay, well, I was forced to go ahead and take uh, my coat off and rip another cord's worth just so we could get more meat drying because I do want to get most of this preserved, but we'll go ahead and roast the rest of it because I got nine left, so let's do that. All right, good. So that's going to be a little bit of time. Let's check on this gear. Okay, yes, yeah, so this is ready now. We can pick this up. Excellent. We can proceed to the next step of tanning. There are several steps before the skin is ready. So we'll go back into hide working with skills H. Now we're going to tan it again. I want to hit T again. And now we're going to do the next step, which is to rinse and dry the skin. Again, we need water, which we have. So we're just going to do it. And it drops at our feet again. You can see it there. Now, if I try to pick it up, it'll tell me it's not ready and we need to wait till early evening. But our meat is probably ready. Yep, this is done now because that took some time. That process we just did with the skin took time. So we're good to go. We've got all that elk meat prepared. It's either drying right here. We got 46 cuts. You can see if I try to pick this up, it'll tell me it will be ready after 24 days. So several weeks, but uh, that's okay. Like I said, that's good to have. It's kind of something we can look forward to. Now we do have a bunch of meat on us right now. I've got over 25 pieces of roast elk cut. We're just going to eat as much of that as we can because this will probably only last for like three or four days before it starts to spoil. So I'm going to eat as much meat as possible while we've got it. So that was a great little discovery right at the start. Okay, well, speaking of great discoveries, when I pulled out to look at our traps and stuff, I noticed we've got a bird caught in the southern trap. You see him down there? Let's, let's take a walk. I'm going to zoom in a little bit easier to see. And we've got our knife in our hand. So you can see, he's trying to get away. He's trying to run, but he's trapped in the trap. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use my knife. One, downward, blunt on the head. I always go blunt, and I always try to strike the head or the legs so that we don't mess up the skin. I want to make a nice, clean skin and butcher this thing up nicely. So it's down. It's easy to kill birds. So I'm going to just go ahead and hit it again with the knife. There we go. Now it's unconscious. Let's hit it in the skull. Blunt skull till it dies. There it goes. Now it's dead. I'm going to pick it up. And I'm going to leave the heather on the ground. Now, the trap is triggered, so I need to reset it. So I'm going to hit skills, trap, and then I'm going to hit R for reset down in that direction. Boom. It's ready to go. All right. It's already got the heather in it, and we just got ourselves a bird. So let's go butcher that up, too. Awesome. We'll probably just cook this meat on the fire, but um, we've got a lot of meat now. It's not going to last though. Let's see. Did that take enough time? No, the skin at our feet here is not quite ready, that elk skin. So what I'm going to do is move over. You could process the bird right on top, but sometimes it gets a little confusing when you've got multiple skins in the same spot. So I'm just going to move over here to process the bird. I'm going to drop it. You always need to drop it. You can't really do this from your inventory. So you need to drop it. I'm standing on the bird now, and I'm going to skin it. 
Nice. Now I've got the skin in my uh, inventory, so I'm going to butcher the bird. And now I've got the meat and the skin. Let's see. Is this thing ready? No, not yet. I'm going to, I'm really tired and weary, but I'm going to push this. I'm going to go ahead and eat some of our elk. We'll take a quick drink of the stream. And now I'm going to clean that uh, skin, that willow grouse skin. Clean it. Oh, it's getting real dark. Yeah, I'll push it, and we're going to tan the skin with the little bit of fat we get. We get four ounce, 0.4 ounces of fat. All right, good. Now, this thing is still not ready, but we're so tired, I'm just going to go to bed. It's time for bed. Let's do it. We're warm. We're weary. We probably don't need a fire because it's so early in the, the winter season still. There's no snow on the ground. So if we do need a fire, we'll hopefully we'll wake up <laughs> and not freeze to death. Okay, looks like we survived the night and it is early morning. We're still warm. Like I said, we'll know when it gets too cold not to have a fire. I'll know for sure. So we won't let ourselves freeze to death. Trust me. It's not a, something that can just happen by accident if you know what you're doing. All right. And I'm going to eat a whole bunch of roasted elk meat. Oh, yeah. Fill up on that. Now let's go check our skins. It's very hard to see because it's dark. So we don't have the ability to see without like a torch or something. Um, and I'm not going to make any of those right now. So, but I know where our stuff's at. I can kind of get there on my own. All right. So I pick up the harsh winter tanning elk skin and I pick up the bird skin. So these guys, the skins are in different stages of tanning, but I can still do this with them in my inventory. I'll, I'll be able to do this. So I'm going to hit skills H for hide working and T to tan. And I'm going to do the winter elk skin. Okay. That one's not ready. That's the wrong thing. Let's do shift ht and we'll do the bird skin yeah all right so the elk skin is actually on the final stage though so this after this stage is over we will have a fresh elk fur ready to go for whatever we want to use it for but we need to move away from the water the final stage does not use water in fact what it needs is a place to beat the skin dry so we're going to beat it imagine hitting with a rock or a club but what you need is a log. So that's why I grabbed that log earlier. And it's right next to our base or the shelter here. So when I hit skills, hide working, and then T to tan, the, uh, the harsh winter elk skin, now it's going to say a workbench or working surface is required and a beater is required. So that is the log is our working surface and the stone nearby. We'll use a stone as the beater. And that's it. Now it is going to take a while. This is the longest step in the process is beating it out. But once you've done that, like I said, we've got ourselves a harsh winter elk fur, 2.2 pounds of it. Now we can actually use that to make some mittens. So I think we should definitely do that. That's going to be the first thing we need. Um, let me go real quick. Oh, that wore us out too. I'm going to have to rest. Yeah. All right. Time to eat. Let's have a little lunch. Early, early brunch here of elk meat. And let's go check our bird skin real quick. Yeah, so this is rinsed and it's done. It's ready for the beater as well. So I'm going to step back over here and we're going to do this. The bird skins are very small, so they're very easy. They only take like a half an hour. Um, all right, so now we've got a piece of bird leather, willow grouse leather. All right, very good. Some animals turn into fur, some turn into leather. You can kind of figure out what's what if you think about it hard enough. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to put this rough fur overcoat on because I just realized I took that off and never put it back on. Now, let's go ahead and the last thing we're going to do today is craft up some gloves. We've got that fur, so we're going to make gloves. I'm going to hit Shift plus M for crafting, and now you see clothes. We want some fur mittens. There it is, selected. Now it's gonna say we need, ooh, I might need to make some cordage, hold on. We need 1.2 pounds of fur, which we have, but okay, I do have some poor cloth cord here still. Let's see, and that, that's not enough. Thin cordage, oh, I don't think the cloth cordage counts as that. Hold on a second. Okay, well, I got to figure it out. The cloth cord works, but I just needed a full three piece length of it, not like a one piece and a two piece mix and match. So I got the full piece. Uh, yeah, so we're good to go. We're going to make the mittens now. Takes a little bit of time. As you can see, I also built a fire because we're getting cold. All right, so now we have some crude elk mittens. They're crude. That's not the best, but hey, it's better than nothing. So I'm going to hit Shift W to wear those. 
and now our hands are protected for the winter, at least partially because they're crude, but we could do worse, we could do better, you know how it goes. Anyway, we're going to zoom out, take one last look around for some birds. I don't see any. Uh, I also don't see the trap that we set up top. I think I might have been triggered, but anyway, no birds right now, so we're good to go. But this was rather a successful first day, I think, here. We did get the elk, which is awesome. That's going to set us off really nicely for the next couple weeks, but uh, winter is still ahead. We have not seen anywhere near the hardest part of the winter yet. So, guys, tune in for the next episode if you'd like to see that. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Hurt, Helpless, and Afraid playthrough, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, and now check out this fan art by a couple of my Discord members, Finn and Vita. It's pretty good, and I love the cuttlefish.